Hi everybody, it's Meg from Books Off the Beaten Path and it's time for another early morning book review. My lighting is not too good this morning. I feel like it's a little dark in here, so I apologize for that. I don't have my ring light set up in the kitchen. I do that in the dining room, but everybody's asleep, so I don't want to... But I normally do these from the kitchen anyway, so whatever. Okay, so today we are going to talk about my most recently finished book, Menfreya, can you see that? By Victoria Holt. Now this is the second Victoria Holt I've read. The first one was the annotated Mistress of Melon, um, which I enjoyed. Menfreya, I really enjoyed too. Um, I'm gonna give it a four stars. It really kept me guessing. She really had the atmosphere and she was throwing me a lot of red herrings that I was willingly following like a little dog. And when we finally get to the climax, the person who is the villain, shall we say, because it's not really like a villain situation, but the person who is the villain, shall we say, is someone that I never suspected, never at all suspected. So let me give you just a few points about Menfreya. First off, she does talk about, okay, let me just start off by telling you what the story is. There's this young woman and her name is Harriet and Harriet has one leg shorter than the other. And she, and that's important because it makes her very unmarriageable. Um, in her father's eyes, her father's a member of parliament, and in her aunt's eyes and everything like that, this deformity makes her very unmarriageable. But she does have a lot of money. So they know that they can kind of push the leg under the table, I guess, sorry for the pun, um, in order to get her married. So she ends up marrying this guy by the name of Bevel, love the name and he's kind of a cat and we know that he's a cat she knows that he's a cat when she marries him because the first time he meets her he's sneaking off the cat just bit me he's sneaking off for a an assignation with a village girl and she happens to be in the place where they're going to have this assignation and so she sees him and everything like that Anyway, Bevel has a sister, Gwen Ann, and Gwen Ann is a wild one. She's just a wild thing and everything like that. So we've got her story, Gwen Ann's story, and she's supposed to marry kind of this rising star, this higher up, new money kind of situation, but she doesn't. She runs off with an actor. And of course that doesn't sit well with the family. In the meantime, we've got Bevel, is he cheating? Is he not cheating? Does she believe him? Does she not believe him? Uh, and they have this clock, uh, the house, the manor house, which is Manfreya, has this clock. And if the clock ever stops, then one of the Manfreys will die. And so guess what? The clock stops. And then we're like, who's going to die? Who's it going to be? And everything like that. Um, it's really very well done. It's on the Cornish coast. It's a gothic. You have a lot of that gothic feel. Um, she was never out on the front with her one leg shorter than the other in this outfit. She was, she was always sort of, you know, in the house. It's a lot about power. Um, and surprisingly, there is a Victoria Holt, let me back up, Victoria Holt, I've only read two, and there's not a lot of sex in them, not that I would expect there to be, but there was more mention of intimate acts in this book than in The Mistress of Melon. Um, and one of the mentions of the intimate acts was her husband gets mad at her and basically takes her by force. And she tells him as he's taking her by force that she will not be treated. She will not be, I'm going to use the R words, cover your ears if you haven't heard it. She will not be raped like a common peasant. And he tells her, yes, she will be because you're my wife. 
And, but then after that, we're all good. You know, I mean, I know it was written in a different age and it was written about a different age and everything. I, I found that it's hard. To, it was written in 1966. Um, and I found that part really hard to swallow. It was just so odd for Harriet, who was a strong character, to be, to not be upset about that after it happened. But she wasn't. She was, you know, angry the next morning, but then she just kind of goes on with it. Um, I don't know. I really, I really had a problem with that. Um, but overall, the book itself was well written. It was atmospheric. It had good, strong characters. It was fun. And I enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, I don't know what I'm going to read next. I think I might need a palate cleanser. I might do some Cherry Ames or The Bones of Santorium. Don't know yet. But anyway, I just wanted to say good morning. Here's your early morning book review. And I'm going to say it. I've, I've listened recently to some YouTube advice and some YouTube advice has been don't ask for subscribers and likes, but I'm going to anyway. I'm asking for subscribers and likes. So give me a like, hit that subscribe button, and I will check you later.